Welcome to Talking Ball. I'm CJ Vogel, joined today by Jerry Hamilton uh, on Texas football. We got you guys this week. Big recruiting visit uh, weekend over on Saturday. Texas, uh, you know, hosted a number of big time four and five star recruits getting to see uh, Texas in action on the field for its first scrimmage of the spring. A number of new coaches on the field as well and a number of opportunities for the Longhorns to make big impressions with a number of top targets uh, on campus this weekend. It felt like to me, Texas did a good job hitting on who they needed to. And they also came out of uh, the weekend with a commitment from Chapel Hill running back Ricky Stewart. So all in all, I would say a successful weekend. Uh, but Jerry, I wanted to pass it to you. First off, I hope you got a chance to look, look at the eclipse earlier today. Uh, pretty cool. I didn't look at it, else I wouldn't be here. So I just looked in the peaked in the direction, right? Well, while it got dark out in Austin for a little bit, the sun and the light is still shining on the recruiting world uh, for the Longhorns. Uh, I had to throw that pun out there a little bit, but I wanted to throw it to you here. Uh, who did Texas make you know strong impressions for, or at least make a little bit of movement for after this weekend? Yeah, so I think you got to start with DeCorian Moore, right? I mean, and, and what I, what was big for DeCorian's visit uh, on Saturday, which was a two day visit. He didn't go home until Sunday, got in late Friday night after the district track meet was this was the first time he watched a practice, okay? So, and everything that encompasses a practice. So he gets to go to the position meetings, uh, you know, team meeting before uh, before the practice, and the practice, then the post-practice. And then he got to spend time with Colin Simmons, John T. Cook, and some other Texas uh, players on Saturday night. So he got, this was almost like an official visit, but not. Obviously, it helps when you have family in Austin, you have a place to stay, right? But he was on campus a long time. It was almost like an official visit. But getting the watch practice was key for DeCorian and, and speaking to a couple of people close to him. He wanted to see coaches coach, interact in the meeting rooms, watch the practice, watch the guys coach, watch how guys responded to Chris Jackson um, and, and all of that and look at the talent up close at Texas. And he came away very impressed from what I was told. And look, he remains committed to LSU. This, I think this recruitment's going until June. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I just don't think it will. I think he'll take visits to Ohio State, Oregon. But I do think eventually he'll come down to Texas and LSU, which is a familiar theme in, a theme in Duncanville with five-star prospects of late. Uh, and I think Texas helped themselves. Uh, this this weekend, I don't think there's any way around it. Um, then you know you look at a guy like Jonah Williams, CJ out of Galveston Ball, um, coming out of January, Oklahoma was a big big favorite, heavy favorite for him. They they did the best job with the baseball football combo, and that football combo was recruiting him at safety all along in that hybrid position they have uh, in Brent Venable's defense. So they were in a very good spot. Jonah did not come to the January 20 junior day at Texas. So Saturday was the first time he had been on campus in a while, and he was on campus with his mom and dad. His father played at U of H and Galveston Ball. Uh, but he got a lot of attention from Steve Sarkeesian and Blake Gideon. I, I spoke with somebody in the Williams camp this morning. He's not yet scheduled the official visit to Texas, but things are trending in that direction. So again, once that June visit set, we'll know, okay, this thing is moving in the right direction or a better direction, I should say, for Texas. I think Oklahoma remains a team to beat. Oregon's going to official visit. And, CJ, there are some other guys as well that you think we uh, that Texas made a move for. Hey, real quick on Jonah Williams, I did want to ask you about the baseball side of things because we, he did make the trip over to Dish Falk, Falk Field uh, prior to Texas's game against BYU on Saturday, kind of right in that middle of the time uh, while Texas was scrimmaging. He hopped on a golf cart, went on over there, got to check out the baseball facility. Is that really going to be an overarching theme for him uh, of being able to play both. How important is the baseball side of things for Jonah Williams? I think it's very important. He He's on the MLB draft board where that is. I don't know. He's a six, three, uh, really good left-handed hitter. Uh, he throws it uh, in the upper eighties off the mound, but he's a center fielder, uh, mm -hmm. but a big athlete in the center field position uh, that can run and has power. He has late power, too. Um, so I think it's a key. I think it's very key. The first baseball, college baseball experience he ever had was a Texas camp when he was younger. So uh, I think baseball is a huge factor in this, uh, and Texas is treating the recruitment as such. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's huge. And for Texas to get, you know, kind of up to speed there should go a long way. Ultimately, we'll see actually how you know much of an impact it makes. One other guy I wanted to mention was Jamie French. I got to talk to him afterward. 
Dodgers has made a big move. Great impression for the Longhorns and Chris Jackson specifically. Uh, we've known, having talked to Jamie in the past, he likes what Steve Car Sarkeesian does with his offense. He likes the way he gets his wide receivers involved and uses them in the system. But now we got to sit back, watch him coach in a practice, and see the campus and the facilities in the city itself, which was big. Uh, Jamie uh, mentioned Texas is now amongst his top three. Previously, they were not. Tennessee and Ohio State, the two other schools in that top group. Uh, what's interesting, though, Jerry, is there's not yet an official visit scheduled to Ohio State, who's, again, perceived to be one of those teams to beat. I think there's a couple predictions out there for him to land in Columbus. Right now, he's got an official visit set to Miami on June 1st, uh, Tennessee, the June 14th through 16th weekend, and he will be coming in uh, that big recruiting uh, visit weekend at the end of June, uh, June 21st through 23rd, their official visit locked in. But uh, I wanted to get your take on it because, again, Ohio State, a little interesting there. They, they've obviously recruited wide receivers and developed them very well in the past. Jamie's been atop top of their board for quite a while now, but no official visit. Is there anything to look in there? Or, you know, is Ohio State just waiting for the right time to get him on campus? Yeah, I don't think there's anything right now. I mean, we're sitting there on May, Monday, April 8th. Uh, there's plenty of time for that. And look, guys, they release their dates at different times, right? Um, but I think Miami's interesting, that taking that swing. And Tennessee, really. I mean, that means Texas passed up Miami, one-time Alabama commitment, by the way. Um, I, it's What's going to be interesting with Jamie French is does he stay in the SEC or not? I think there's only two schools that can pull him from the SEC, and that's Ohio State and that's Miami. And I don't want to count Florida State out, but I think those are the two main schools that would have a chance. Otherwise, you know, if, if we ever start hearing, oh, this guy's going to stay in the SEC, Jamie's definitely going to stay in the SEC because he was one time Alabama commitment, then Texas odds go up at that point yeah. in time. Uh, so I think that's going to be the interesting thing to monitor there is as this thing starts to play out, is he actually going to leave the SEC? Yeah, that'll be interesting to watch. Of course, we had some conversations earlier on OnTexasFootball.com uh, about uh, the, the the conference prioritization of Jamie French. We'll see. Uh, but, Jerry, before we knock out Khalid Lockett, because that's another big prospect that is coming up, do you mind telling us about our sponsor today, uh, the Longhorn Wealth Group? Yeah, that's Longhorn Wealth Management Group. John Donovan, thank you very much to John Donovan, Donovan for being the sole sponsor of Talk and Ball April is National Financial Literacy Month, and John Donovan wants to encourage all of you and the On Texas football family to take advantage of the free resources available through the Financial Planning Association and certified financial planners nationwide to help educate you and your family on all aspects of financial planning and risk management. John is a certified financial planner who spent over 15 years teaching continuing financial education courses to adults at local colleges and the employees at local corporations. He would welcome the opportunity to be a resource to provide that education to all of you as he has dedicated his firm to selling to serving fellow UT alumni and UT employees and fans as well as their family and friends. So take advantage of John Donovan's over 30 years of applying his CFP fiduciary responsibilities to both educate and serve his clients in the areas of investment planning, retirement planning, insurance planning, planning, and estate planning. Simply give John and the Longhorn Wealth Team a call at 972-707-4900 or visit longhornwealth.net for your free 90-minute consultation to explore how they can help you and, more importantly, your family achieve true financial independence and security. Oh, and by the way, John has a message. Hook him. Well, there we go. Thank you, Jerry, and thank you, John Donovan and the Longhorn Wealth Management Group uh, for sponsoring Talking Ball this week. Uh, Jerry, but getting to Khalid Lockett, because that's another interesting one. I think going back a few months, Texas probably had some pretty – uh, high hurdles, really, that they needed to clear to get involved in this recruitment. He did not make it down for the January 20th uh, uh, junior day. Texas did go check him out in, in school for a final visit in that open contact period. But it sounded like when we were talking to him after his visit, he's, he had a, a great time with K.J. Lacey, with the Corey and Moore. Spent a lot of time with Jamie Fritch. The two of them went kind of back and forth debating Texas – athletes and Florida athletes, you kind of anticipate that being one of those talking points amongst these uh, top wide receivers. But all in all, a, a, a pretty solid day for the Longhorns with Khalid Lockett. What's the latest with him? 
Yeah, so I, I think there's some keys here with the click locket recruitment. Obviously, not necessarily a family from Texas. Dad was born in L.A. He did go to Dallas Samuel High School. They moved from Los Angeles. Mom, Mississippi and Louisiana growing up, right? So not a family that's just always been in Texas. Um, but I'll say this. Here's what I, I picked up from Saturday, SCJ, and I think you did as well. This is a academics, football, and development recruitment. No Football's number one, but it's not a distant runner, runaway number one. There is a lot of thought that's going into this recruitment on what is best place for Kalik to grow, not only and develop, not only as a football player, but as a young man. That was reiterated multiple times. Uh, so that's an important piece in this recruitment. And I think, look, the, the Texas culture, the education at Texas, the player development at Texas, I think those – have struck an important chord with Kalik and his family. A long way to go in the recruitment. Obviously, there's going to be visits. He's been to Penn State. He's been to Ohio State, right? He's been to some places. He'll get out the USC. Um, he's going to make – he'll get out the LSU, right? So he's got official visit schedule. He'll be back June 21st through 23rd to Texas. But it was so big to get him on campus. It had been about a year since he'd been on campus, I believe, um, or maybe early in the season for a game. But it had been a while since he'd been on campus. And here's the reality for some of these guys, and an important piece to this. This is the first time they've taken in like a real practice day at Texas, which is so important to me, uh, much more important than a game day. The atmosphere strikes a chord. But look, when you can sit in a position room and listen to coach, coach, and players interact with coach, go to the practice field, watch these guys coach, watch the players interact, as we were talking about with DeCorey and Moore, and then be around the players after and, and ask those questions you want to ask them. And even Saturday in the days to come, I think that's invaluable in recruiting, especially if you have good culture and you're winning, which Texas does. So I think the reports are going to be pretty positive for the Horns coming out of this one. Absolutely. There are three guys on the defensive side of the ball I wanted to quickly hit on as well. Zion Williams talked uh, with, with very high regard about Kenny Baker getting to see him kind of coach his guys who – He's still kind of growing and developing a relationship with. Thought it was very impressive uh, the way that he handled his guys in his room there, obviously, in the meeting as well. Uh, Elijah Barnes left with a little notebook from uh, Coach Nansen about, you know, the Texas scheme and, 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 and coverages, everything along the lines of that. One of the only guys, probably the only guy I saw leave with that packet yeah. in hand. And then Aiden Anding, the the cornerback out of Ruston, Louisiana. Uh, I, I, we talked about it while we were on campus. It Felt like he was getting some uh, VIP red carpet treatment rolled out for him while on the visit. What's you know the latest with those three? And was there any other guy on the defensive side of the ball that you were saying? You know what my biggest takeaway was on Zion Williams before we get the recruiting. He could fit right in and do these shows with us and be a happy camper, right? I mean, he's yeah. you can tell he's a theater guy. He loves theater. He was in theater class last year at Lufkin High. You can tell he's he's kind of built for all this back and forth stuff. Yeah, but you know, so what? Look, he presents his visits um, through words so well, right? He's a great yes. interview. He he really gets detailed. Uh, he has a good memory. Obviously, he's got great recall. Um, and I think Kenny Baker uh, really helped himself. Look, because again, this is a big day. It's a big two days. Myron Charles was on campus the Friday, the day before, out of Port Charlotte, and. I, I think he's going to come back in June for an official visit, guys. It's just got to get set up this week. But I think that's happening. Um, so those, it was Kenny Baker's first time since he was hired from the NFL. These are his first national recruitments. He came from – went Western Kentucky NFL now to Texas. This is his first opportunity to really sit down with national recruits on the D-line who are going to be some big battles and show what he can do and communicate what he can do now. He went out and met with Zion at Lufkin High in late January. It's the first meeting. That's different from Zion sitting in a meeting room and watching you work, then asking the Texas players questions. You know, so I think I think Kenny Baker presented himself very well. Zion was there with his little brother. Uh, look, and this is going to be an LSU Texas deal, right? I mean, he's going to be at LSU this weekend or scheduled to be for the spring game. Uh, he's going to take official visits to both, plus TCU in May. A&M will also get a June official visit. I don't think it's set up quite yet, but they, they're expected to get a visit. But I really think this is going to come down to LSU and Texas as of today. And so LSU's got Bo Davis, a longer relationship. Um, Zion's told – this. Zion has said Baton Rouge, Louisiana, kind of reminds him of East Texas, which it does. Trees, everything right, like – there's a home feeling to it. Um, but I think Texas 
is right there. I think it's been a 1A, 1B. I think it remains a 1A, 1B type of recruitment, LSU, Texas. Uh, they're going to battle it out. But I think Texas did very well Saturday. Then Aiden Anding, to me, is an interesting. He was the most recent offer prior to Friday um, and prior to the weekend. He was offered on March 28th. And I talked to him after that offer. He said, yeah, I want to get down to Texas. Coach Joseph called me um, and, and told me I was going to be offered. And he'd never been to Texas. And then that mon the Monday before uh, April 6th, he got on the phone with Steve Sarkeesian. And I said, I was kind of taken aback. I said, whoa, they're accelerating the process here. They immediately got him and his mom's and, and little bro or brother scheduled to be in town this weekend on Saturday, April 6th. So Texas instantly made him a priority. And I know you talked to Aiden Anning, but the big news for Texas coming out of that visit, he's got a June 21st through 23rd official visit scheduled. That's one of the two big weekends for Texas. He's now a priority corner uh, target for the Longhorns. Absolutely. That's kind of the, the big takeaway I had from Aiden Anning as well. Uh, he spent a lot of time with Coach Joseph, liked what he saw from the Texas defensive backs, whether it be Malik Muhammad, Kobe Black. Terrence Brooks, he had a close eye on that group in practice, something that he mentioned as a big takeaway from getting to see these guys on the field, yeah. a kind of recurring theme. One name is missing from the Texas recruiting board from this April 6th visit, but they're not going to have to wait too long to get him on campus. That's five-star Michael Fasusi uh, out of Louisville, really talented prospect, someone Texas has been pursuing uh, very heavily. You know, he's taken a couple trips to Texas A&M this spring, Oklahoma very much in the mix, but now Texas gets a chance to answer. And they're getting a chance, really, with him being one of the only guys on campus for this trip. What's the latest? Yeah, I mean, you can almost pad him up and let him practice at this point. Nobody's gonna, nobody else is gonna be around, right? Um, you can't, <laughs> obviously. But look, it's. I think this was by design uh, by the by the Fasusi, so they could really get that one on one time, really get through an entire day of University of Texas football, maybe without uh, the coaches going in a lot of different directions because of a lot of recruits on campus. So. Kyle Flood, Steve Sarkeesian, Tashar Choice all did a really good job. Uh, and Fasusi gets on campus on Tuesday, tomorrow. And I think it's a big day for Texas. Now, look, he's going to officially visit June 21st through 23rd. Texas gets the last visit weekend, right? He's going to go to AM. He's going to go to Missouri. He's going to go to Oklahoma. This has been an Oklahoma-Texas battle for so long. I, I think AM's put themselves in the game. Uh, I do think he'll end up staying close to home. But unless there's a – barring a major change, I still think this is – continues to be headed more to Texas OU with A&M now in the mix versus anybody jumping ahead of uh, Texas and Oklahoma right now. We'll see if that remains the case. A&M's got to win some of these offensive line battles in 25. They have to. Um, they absolutely have to. There's too many good players in state. So there's more pressure on A&M in this recruitment. Obviously, Bill Biedenball would love to win this recruitment. I mean, uh, DJ Campbell, Texas has is, Texas is hit on some guys on the offensive line. Over Oklahoma recently, DJ Campbell was a big one uh, in that 2022 class where uh, Oklahoma thought they had a shot even after DJ had signed with Texas in December and didn't announce it. Uh, so th this is a big recruitment because it's a five-star offensive lineman out of DFW area. A&M's trying to put a footprint, more of a footprint in a DFW this year. Oklahoma always has to do well in DFW, and Texas has kind of looked dominant at times in DFW under Banks, Sarkeesian, and uh, uh, Chris Gilbert and all those guys at Texas. So this is a, one of those battleground recruitments, uh, line in the sand recruitments in 25, and Fasusi will be on campus tomorrow. Yeah, that'll be a big one. Another DFW kind of – uh, kind of on the outskirts of DFW uh, prospect coming in, Jonathan Cunningham coming in April 11th. That's a big one now with Texas no longer having Anthony Williams in the class. Jerry, with Jonathan Cunningham, does that kind of fit the mold of what you think Texas is looking at uh, at the linebacker spot under Johnny Nansen? Yeah, I think so. And then what will be interesting, CJ, he's got he's six two and a half quarter, six two and a half, one ninety. 190, couldn't really run. His brothers are either going to be drafted or in the NFL. Jonathan can really run, but more than what he what he can do, picking him up and putting him down, he's instinctive with long arms. He's got he's got those long levers. He's got that upside frame. He's an instinctive linebacker. He's not an athlete playing linebacker. He's a linebacker that's also a good athlete. So mm. uh, I think there's some things there. What'll be interesting uh, out of uh, out of a visit like this is will Texas schedule for an official visit? If they do, then things are going to get real. Um, and that that will that will be interesting after Jonathan Cunningham's on campus uh, Thursday. Then there's Jackson 
uh, uh, Blackwell, uh, the defensive lineman out of Lorraine, who he could be a hell of a center too, by the way, after watching him, seeing him in person last week. But Jackson Blackwell, one of those up and coming defensive linemen. There's a deeper, there's a deeper D line class in Texas. He has official visits to Arizona yeah. and Baylor. He's a guy that Texas hasn't seen in person before. So he's going to get on campus. He's going to be six two and a quarter, about three hundred and ten pounds. Um, and is an athletic guy, big hands, long enough arms, barrel chested guy. He's going to be impressive in person uh, to Texas. So it'll be interesting to see, does Texas add any official visits here with some of these guys coming in later this week? Yeah, that'll be, of course, one of the big takeaways from these in your, I guess, midweek visits before we get to April 13th, which has a pretty healthy list as well. More so in the 26 and 27 class. We'll talk about two quarterbacks in this group coming up. But, Jerry, can you tell us again about Longhorn Wealth Management Group and John Donovan? Yeah, thank you very much to John Donovan, president of Longhorn Wealth Management Group, for being the sole sponsor of Talk and Ball. He's a proud Texas X's life member. Got to meet him, spend some time with him at Terry Black's Barbecue in Dallas. Us. Great guy. We had a lot. We had a fun talking Texas football, uh, maybe even a mix of a little Texas basketball talk in the scrum of all of us. But April is National Financial Literacy Month, and John Donovan wants to encourage all of the On Texas family to take advantage of the free resources available through the Financial Planning Association and certified financial planners nationwide to help educate you and your families on all spa- aspects of financial planning and risk management. John is a certified financial planner who has spent over 15 years teaching continuing financial education courses to adults at local colleges and to employees at local corporations. He would well he would welcome the opportunity to be a resource to provide that education to every single one of you as he has a dedicated dedicated his firm to serving his fellow University of Texas alumni and all University of Texas employees and fans, as well as their family and friends. Uh, so take advantage of John Donovan's over 30 years of applying his CFP fiduciary responsibilities to both educate and serve his clients in the areas of investment planning, retirement planning, insurance planning, and estate planning. Simply give John and the Longhorn Wealth team a call, 972-707-4900, Or shoot them an email, longhornwealth.net, for your free 90-minute consultation to explore on how John and his team can help you and your family achieve true financial independence and security. And John, as always, says hook them. Perfect. Thank you, John Donovan, for sponsoring uh, Talking Ball this week and always. uh, To the quarterbacks, because I I, I lied a little bit, Jerry. I said two. There's actually updates on three. Uh, First is the new one, 2026 quarterback Grant Smith coming in from Spring, Texas. What's kind of the rundown here, and is that someone that Texas fans should be uh, familiar with? Yeah, so Grant Smith's out of Grand Oaks, the newer school in spring. They're east of I-45 if you're driving up north, Um, one of the growing areas in that north Houston area. Uh, Big kid, 6'3", about 210. Father played at Klein Oak High School in uh, Sam Houston State as a linebacker. Football families, grown-up football, big hands, strong arm. A guy that A.J. Milwee is definitely going to come take a look at. Um, in May and evaluate him, Jet Serrat at Carthage, a number of other guys in the state of Texas. He's going to be on campus tomorrow. He put it out on social media. He'll be on campus tomorrow for an unofficial visit to watch the Horns practice. Um, and so that's that's one of the newer ones. Now, Texas has offered three in the 26th class. Uh, Jared Curtis committed to Georgia um, in, in late March. Then you have Troy Hoon was on campus uh, over the weekend. And you have Dia Bell from American Heritage, son of Raja Bell. Anybody watch the NBA knows one of the top defensive players in our generation. Dia Bell was on campus in late March. Um, and obviously, CJ, you have somebody else that will be in this weekend. Yeah, uh, 2020 quarterback Weston Nielsen out of Bastrop will be making the trip on Thursday yes. morning oh, to catch Texas in action. A really talented prospect. I, it's a little premature with the comparison here, but after seeing him again – throw for the first time i've gotten to see him in in in, in the weight room and some agility drills but you get to see him throw on the move a little bit he reminds me a little bit of Cade klubnik who uh again at westlake made a lot of noise was a a gatorade national player of the year obviously at clemson as well but he has that similar kind of build that wiry frame with a a a very lively arm on the move that's what i like about him a lot Uh, also a great athlete just finished first in the high jump in his district at six foot one you can tell again that's a guy that uh, you, you don't see the quarterbacks doing that too often, as well as being a part of the four by two, which you know kind of ran in that 52 second uh, run uh, the other day. So 
Weston Nielsen won to watch. Sarkeesian was uh, one of his first stops in January was to Bastrop, uh, as was A.J. Milby, who got by there uh, this winter to see him throw. Both of them will be back again. Uh, but, Jerry, that other guy I wanted to mention, 2026 quarterback, yeah. Will Griffin, mention him coming mm-hmm. in. It, again, kind of in that that evaluation phase for him, is is is, is that something Texas is uh, kind of just waiting out with the 26 class, or do you think there's kind of a hierarchy in the way that they're pers- – pursuing that that position right now i think he's been on campus before so that helps him it, it, it won't be the first time he's met with aj milwee or sarkeesian uh, i'm interested to see if another 26 quarterback offer goes out uh this week and uh because look that the couple of 2026 quarterbacks are off the board early we mentioned curtis and then south carolina has a quarterback uh committed as well from uh i believe it's jackson alabama um, so there's two quarterbacks committed to SEC schools already in 26. So this process continues to accelerate. Remember, last year, K.J. Lacey committed on June 3rd at the elite yep. uh, camp, junior day. Um, so the elite camp. So things are accelerating a little more 26 quarterbacks. So is Texas going to be more aggressive offering? We'll find out. If they did, Will Griffin's been on campus uh, more than once already. He's a starter since eighth grade at Tampa Jesuit. And for those that don't know, if your middle school campus and your high school campus are on the same campus technically, you can play varsity football in middle school. And that's exactly what Will Griffin in 10 and three-quarter inch hands. He's got about as big a hands as you'll see uh, on a football that doesn't play in the NBA. So uh, he's, he's a talented quarterback. He throws it down the field really well. It'll be interesting to see if Texas extends another offer or if they make really big pushes on Troy Hoon or Dia Bell coming up. Yep, that'll be interesting to watch. A few last names in that 26 class to mention that will be on campus. Toa Katoa out of Euless yeah. Trinity. Uh, one of your favorites, John Turntine, expected to make the trip this weekend as well. Uh, Felix Oho out of uh, Mansfield. Big boys coming in for Kyle Flood in that 26 class. And then dipping down into 27, Waxahachie athlete Jay Quan Snell, someone – Texas fans should become aware of a very talented prospect out of the DFW area that's starting to rack up a number of offers and will continue to be a big riser this spring. Uh, but looking ahead, Jerry, is there one last final comment about this group, about this weekend upcoming for the Texas Longhorns? Yeah, so I think uh, John Turntine coming in Saturday is a big one. I, look, he's going to be a five-star offensive tackle. Um, if not, people got to readjust their rankings. He is that level kid for me. Um, he he's arguably I've said he might have been the best prospect in the state last year as a sophomore, regardless of position. That's prospect, not player prospect. These guys have to grow, but uh, he's got it all. Um, also, top five percent in this class uh, w- w- wants to be a pre-med uh, major. I mean, he's got a he is a complete, complete football prospect uh, and student athlete and, and elite elite talent at the offensive tackle position. So while Michael Fasusi is going to grab the headlines, as he should, he's a 25 guy Tuesday. John Turntine coming in Saturday. Once again, he was there during the season when Texas offered him. He was at the January 20 junior day, even though he's a sophomore with his dad, who was a very good defensive lineman at TCU, and he's coming back again this weekend. So John Turntine's been on campus three times. That's a recruitment you like if you're Kyle Flood right now because they keep coming back to campus multiple times before he ever starts his junior season. Yeah, that is big. So uh, again, we'll have, we'll be lighting up uh, on texasfootball.com with all of these updates as the week progresses. Um, We'll have a a media availability with Steve Sarkeesian yesterday, or sorry, tomorrow as well. I'm still thinking about the eclipse right now, but uh, it'll be exciting. A lot of guys coming in during the week. Obviously, uh, uh, April 13th going to be a big one as well. So that'll do it this weekend for Talking Ball. For Jerry Hamilton, I'm C.J. Vogel, and this has been On Texas Football. Y'all have a great week. Hook them.